Welcome everyone to Celebrate Sausage. My name is Eric and I hope you're enjoying this series so far. You're watching bonus clip number one, how to grind your meat perfectly every time. Stay tuned. Okay, first of all, I'd like to welcome back those of you who have been watching the Celebrate Sausage 2020 series, and I'd like to say hello to those of you who are brand new. If you're not sure what Celebrate Sausage is, at the end of this video, you're gonna find a playlist for Celebrate Sausage 2020. We've got 31 different episodes, 31 different recipes, and I hope you get a chance to check it out. In today's video, we're gonna talk about 10 tips on how you can get the perfect grind when making sausage. Making sausage is not very complicated, and it really just comes down to a handful of steps. Grinding, mixing, and then in some cases, stuffing, and then finally, cooking. And if you can understand each one of those steps, you can elevate your sausage game to an entirely different level. Grinding your meat is the first step when making sausage. And for the sake of this series, we're gonna call it the foundation. Everything we do after grinding the meat is gonna be built upon that foundation. And no matter how good your recipe is, no matter how good you mix it, no matter how good you stuff it, if the foundation is weak, you're gonna have problems at the end. You're gonna have a dry sausage, a sausage that just leaks fat out all over the place, and we don't want that. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 tips to get the perfect grind. Let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is to make sure that your knife and plates are sharp. This is absolutely critical. I've seen more sausage ruined because their plates were dull. And so let's take a look at my knife right quick. We'll do the plates in a minute. And just at a glance with the naked eye, everything looks good, but I can tell you that this knife is incredibly dull. It's hard to see with the naked eye, so what we're gonna do is go under magnification, 250 times magnification, so that you can see what I'm talking about. As I work my way up the knife's blade, you can see that the cutting edge, which is on the right-hand side, uh, is severely damaged. I've got chips, my edge is looking really crazy. I don't really have a well-defined scratch pattern, as you can see, they're kind of all over the place, and it's a need for some desperate maintenance. I sharpen my knife and plates using a couple whetstones from the sausage maker. So what I typically do is I'll put the coarse whetstone on first, after it's been soaking for a little while, I'll put the retaining ring on and I'll run the machine. Depending on the severity, I may run it for anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, in this particular case, I'm gonna run it for 20 seconds because it's looking pretty bad. As soon as I'm done, I'm gonna remove the coarse and I'm gonna put on a finer whetstone and I'm gonna run it for another 20 seconds, at which point our blade will be sharp. Now, you can do this with the plate itself. There's just a different whetstone and you do gotta be careful because those whetstones are a little on the fragile side, but this is what it looks like under magnification after it's been sharpened. Look at that, very well-defined scratch pattern. I've got a beautiful edge. All those chips are now gone. Here's our side-by-side. -side. The one on the left was the before. As you can see, there's the chips, and the one on the right is the after. That's after it's been sharpened. Scratch pattern looks great, and the edge is very well-defined. This knife is ready to cut some meat. If you want more information on the sharpening stones, check out the description box below. To determine if your plates are still sharp, remove your glove and with your bare hand, just rub your finger over those holes. You should feel a literal edge over every one of those holes. If it feels completely smooth and your finger doesn't catch on each one of those holes, then it's either time to sharpen it or replace the plate. The cool thing about the plates is that there's two sides. So if one side feels smooth, just flip it around and use the sharp side. So well, there you go. All right, on to number two, select the right grinding plate. Now this seems relatively obvious, but this is a mistake I see a lot of people make. This is a stuffing plate, but it can also be used as an ultra coarse grind. Both of these are coarse plates, these are medium plates, and this is a fine plate. If your ultimate goal is to run your sausage through the fine plate, start with a coarse first and do a double grind. Not only is it easier on your machine, but you'll get a better grind. If you try to grind your meat through that fine plate, especially if it's not partially frozen, you end up creating a lot of friction, generating a lot of heat, potentially smearing that beautiful, flavorful fat. So knowing the plate that you wanna grind on is imperative. In this particular case, I think I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter and a six millimeter for my project. Let's go to number three, clean and sanitize all of your equipment. This is absolutely critical. We're dealing with raw meat, 
sometimes pork, beef, sometimes chicken, and it's important to kill off all unwanted pathogens before we begin. Sometimes sausage sits out for a day while it's curing. Sometimes it sits for several months, like in the case of salami, and we don't want to add any unwanted bacteria. So all I do is spray a little iodophore, which is a great sanitizer, on my equipment. I let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then I dry it off. Once I'm done with that, it's sanitized and time to move on to number four. Number four is to place all the metal parts that you're going to be using to grind in your freezer for one hour. If you ask any professional what's the most important tip they can give you about sausage making, there's a decent chance they're going to tell you temperature. Temperature is everything. We generate a lot of friction and a lot of heat when we grind meat, so making sure that the parts are cold will help keep the meat cold, which in turn will give us a better grind. Now we're gonna put that in the freezer and it's on to number five, prepare the meat. We wanna remove the sinew, the silver skin, the tendons, any unwanted parts before we grind. And trust me, if you don't remove it now, you will have to remove it later from your grinder and that's gonna cause all kinds of disturbance in the grind. So carefully inspect your meat, remove any of those unwanted bits and make sure that you're grinding clean meat or clean fat. What ends up happening if you don't clean your meat on the front end, all of that silver skin, the sinew, those tendons, that gets jammed up into the blade and that ends up affecting the way the knife is cutting the meat. So instead of cutting the meat, it's actually pushing it through the holes, which is gonna cause the fat to smear. And once your fat smears in the beginning, there's absolutely nothing you can do to save your sausage. I do admit that this step does take a little time, but with a nice sharp fillet knife or a nice sharp chef's knife, you can get it done uh, usually with no problem. On to number six, cutting the meat and the fat. There is a special way to cut the meat and the fat, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Depending on the grind that I'm after, I may cut my meat into larger strips or smaller chunks. So for instance, if I'm gonna be doing a coarse grind, let's say for a salami that I'm making or andouille sausage, then I'm generally gonna cut my meat into larger strips. So these are a couple steaks from the pork shoulder that I'm gonna grind. I'm gonna prepare these by cutting them right down the middle, creating in essence two strips. I'm gonna do that for this one as well. And this is what my strip is gonna look like, but it's a little too long because my meat's gonna be partially frozen. So I'm gonna take that and cut it right down the center. And this is about the perfect size if I'm gonna be doing a coarse grind for my sausage. If I'm gonna be doing a medium grind, let's say a six millimeter or a four and a half millimeter, then I'm gonna start off the same way, but instead of cutting large strips, I'm gonna cut off small chunks. And basically I'm kinda of doing the work of the grinder on the front end. This is gonna be easier on the motor of your grinder. So if you're using a small grinder, especially if you're using like a KitchenAid, you might even wanna go a little bit smaller than that. So you get the idea. Large strips if you're cutting a coarse grind, small chunks if you're doing a medium grind. To prepare the fat, we're gonna do it a little differently. You see, fat and grinders don't get along so good. As soon as you chill fat, it gets very hard and it really stresses out the motor of your grinder. So to prepare the fat, and it doesn't matter what fat you're using, we're gonna cut that into small cubes. And that doesn't matter if I'm doing a coarse grind, a medium grind, or a fine grind with the fat. So all I'm gonna do is cut it down the middle and then cut it into basically one inch cubes. And just like the beef, if you happen to be using a small grinder or a KitchenAid grinder, you might wanna cut this up just a little bit smaller. Now that our meat is prepared, let's go ahead and go to number seven. Place your meat in your freezer for 30 to 45 minutes. This step is absolutely critical. You want the temperature of your meat to be in the low 30s. Notice my trays though are really full. It's gonna take a long time for that to chill. So I'm gonna add another tray to the mix pull some out from each one of those trays, which will help it chill a lot faster. Now, I know that not a lot of people have this type of room, and if you have to put everything into one bin, that's okay too. Just realize it may take an hour to an hour and a half. If you do happen to put everything into one bin or one bowl, you wanna go back and make sure that you mix the meat well about every 15 or so minutes. You're gonna notice that the meat on top is gonna to get colder than the meat on the bottom. So by mixing the meat, you're actually gonna help the meat chill more evenly, which is gonna cut down on the amount of time that you're waiting for the meat to get to temperature. What you're looking at is about 50 pounds of meat. It's now evenly distributed amongst four trays. I'm gonna go ahead and place all that into my freezer. And let me show you what it looks like once it comes out of the freezer. This particular process took about 45 minutes and it's hard to see, but the meat and the fat is very firm. Now it's not frozen. It's just one step before frozen. And when I insert my thermopin, you'll see that I am at 30 degrees, 31 degrees, which is absolutely perfect. 
it's now time to move on to the next step, which is number eight, assemble the grinder head. And we wanna watch out for the washer and the retaining ring. As soon as you take all of your metal parts out of your freezer, you're not only gonna notice that they are incredibly cold, but they're gonna be incredibly frosty. The first thing you wanna do is put on your grinder head and go ahead and secure it. As soon as you've got it secured, you wanna put on the auger. Now, depending on the model you have, there may be a washer associated with your auger. So this is the auger that we're looking at right here. In my case, there's a washer. You wanna inspect the washer. If for whatever reason it's damaged, it looks melted, or if it's a little thinner, because it's old, you're gonna wanna replace it because that washer is designed to push the auger forward just enough so that the knife and plate match up perfectly. I'm gonna put a couple of drops of oil onto that washer, which is gonna minimize the friction and keep me from having to replace it as often. If that washer is damaged, then the knife and the plate won't meet up perfectly and it's gonna mess up the grind. Now it's time to insert the auger and then we're gonna come back with the blade and we wanna make sure that the blade's flat side is facing out because that's where the plate is gonna go. Once we have that on, it's time to put on the retaining ring. The trick with the retaining ring is to simply hand tighten it. If it's on too tight, then your blade and your plate are gonna have unnecessary friction. You'll wear those parts out a lot faster and you could possibly get what looks like a gray smear in your meat and that's actual metal shavings. So just loosen it a little bit if that's what's happening. Tip number nine is to trickle the meat into your grinder head. And I know this goes against popular opinion because every grinder came with a stomper but contrary to what you may think, the stomper should not be used during the grinding process. The grinder should do all of the work for you and it should happen very naturally. Matter of fact, the stomper should only be used in the event that you need a little bit of help, but it should not be used as the standard method of grinding. The grinder should pull the meat through and the head should stay mainly clear. As you can see what I'm doing here, I'm trickling the meat in, I'm waiting till the head clears up and then I'm just continuing. This method of grinding your meat is gonna produce the absolute cleanest grind, especially if your knife is sharp, your metal parts are chilled, and your meat is partially frozen. And that brings us to number 10. Observe the meat as it's coming out of your grinder. While you're grinding your meat, it should extrude like spaghetti. If it looks like it's being smeared out, turn the unit off, remove the retaining ring, and check your blade there's a decent chance that your blade is clogged up with sinew or any of that unwanted stuff. Remove all of that, reassemble your grinder head, and continue to grind. This is what our fat looks like as we grind it on a three millimeter plate, and notice the spaghetti-like consistency. Each strain is uniform. It doesn't look like it's being smeared. It's being ground perfectly. This is also pork being ground on a three millimeter plate. This is a second grind and it has the exact same consistency. And when I grab a little bit of it, you can see that it's loose and that's an indication that it was properly chilled before grinding. A little bonus tip, if you wanna get that last bit of meat out of your grinder, you can always take a piece of bread. If it's stale, it's even better. Or if you want your sausage to be gluten-free, you can use crushed ice, or in my case, I've got nugget ice. If you don't have crushed ice, I wouldn't suggest sticking whole ice into your grinder because that's a little too aggressive and hard on the machine. So I'm gonna stick my nugget ice into my grinder, and as you can see right here, it's just gonna push all that meat out. There's my ice particles. I'm just gonna wipe that off, and that's gonna fall right into my bin. And this is what our meat looks like. If I give it one quick temperature check, you can see that our temperature didn't raise a whole lot after grinding because we kept everything very cold, and that's exactly what we're looking for. And there you have it. That's how you properly grind sausage meat. If you can incorporate these 10 practices Every time you make sausage, you'll get the perfect grind every time. I want to thank the Sausage Maker for sponsoring this video. They are literally a one-stop shop for sausage making. You can find a link to their website in the description box below, and they've got an entire selection of grinders, accessories, plates, knives, everything you need. If you have any questions about grinding your meat, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. In bonus clip number two, we're going to be talking about mixing your meat. So you're going to want to stick around for that. Enjoy the rest of the series and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah.